Thank you for joining today's security awareness training. Is it safe to open my email? The mission of our workshop and all our workshops is to help you get more from the technology you already have and also to introduce you to new technologies you need to know about. In the case of security awareness, keep in mind that the Mass Data Security Law, HIPAA, and other industry regulations all require security training for your end users. So this is a great way to catch up. Um, call details, uh, we set up all our calls as listen only. That's for call clarity to cut down ambient noise. If folks need to put a call on hold, uh, that's fine. It's just a little less interactive than we like, but we did get some questions in advance. And if you have questions during any of our calls, just email info at ikaru.com. And in fact, if you think of something tomorrow, uh, later today, tomorrow, please email us or call us anytime. So with security, the stakes are getting higher. Um, recent headline out of Los Angeles, there was a hospital that paid $17,000 in Bitcoin to hackers. The FBI is investigating this. They got a crypto, crypto locker variation, encrypted all their files. I don't know what all the details were that came out of this, but apparently they did not have a robust backup. So they ended up having to pay the ransom, which is a very uh, risky thing to do, but apparently they were down for several days, had to go to paper records, and it was a big disaster. Um, Krebs on Security, a great security blog online, reports that 1.2 billion have been lost to various email scams, and we'll be talking about that today. The most common is, um, that's going around a lot right now, is wire request transfers. Uh, 750 million of that was in the U.S. So th these things are real. They have big monetary value. The $17,000 of ransom is small compared to what it costs the hospital to actually shut down their entire electronic medical record for many days. So stakes are high. And you know, we ask people, you know, the title of this, should I open all my, is it safe to open my email? In a lot of cases, it's not safe to open it. And um, the question is, how do you get a virus? When, when everything's up to date, all your security is up to date, how do you actually get a virus? And the answer is by installing it yourself. And that's what the bad actors are counting on these days. So if you look at all your different lines of defense, these are how threats get through. So your email is, is coming to your end users. Uh, if you're following Akara best practices, you've got a spam filter in place. All email should be filtered in the cloud before it gets to any mail servers. If you've got perimeter security, that's the sonic wall, firewalls, uh, that, that's the one, there are many great brands, that's the one that we standardize on so that we know it inside out, upside down. And with the total secure, the comprehensive gateway security package, that's an annual license renewal. So again, you know, looking at budgets of small business, each thing adds up, but you really do need these protections in place. And then the endpoint security, that's your antivirus, your anti-malware. Uh, we also do open DNS security as well. So all of this is protecting your user. And the bad actors know this, so they have to develop new ways of getting stuff through. Uh, different kinds of attacks. There's d various scams, uh, like the wire request transfers. We're going to show that in a, in a lot more detail. There's phishing, where they're trying to get you to provide your credentials, so then the attack occurs later. And then there's viruses that come through that do things either immediately or later on. So various scams have been around forever. It's just that the bad actors figure, okay, email is a great way to, to, to do their business. Uh, there's bogus business opportunities, chain letters, work at home. There's all this stuff. Actually, 80 to 90% of all mail worldwide is spam. Okay, so after you spam filter, you still get stuff through, and there's, there's things that, uh, that you need to protect your organization from. Spoofed emails are emails that are designed to look like it comes from somebody else. So I don't know if you remember, um, you know, maybe we set up Outlook for it, maybe you set it up yourself. There's a place where you could type in your name, how you want it to appear. When you send an email to somebody, what do you want your from address to look like? Well, it's actually easy to fake this. You could type in something else, and the bad actors know this too. So a lot of times they will create an email that looks like it's from an authority, from a bank or from a colleague or from an industry organization, a, a vendor that you use, but it's fake. Uh, sometimes they're looking for phishing. They want you to trick you. They want to trick you to log into your Verizon account or um, fake uh, 
you know, here's your JetBlue itinerary. They want you to try to log in or they want to trick you to click on a link. Some of them are um, spear phishing. What's known as they have, maybe they have a little piece of information about you. They might have your part of, you know, your name or a username um, a little more targeted to you just because they can pick up information. And it, these are all socially engineered. People are busy. You might get 100, 200 emails a day. Uh, you do business with many, many vendors. The pace is fast. You got to slow down when you're opening your email. These are some of the common ones that we've seen a skin from a Xerox Work Center printer. Uh, sometimes you'll see different variations of spelling. A U.S. Postal Service, uh, this is a common one, a mispackaged delivery. And we actually had a user contact us where they were hit by a bad virus. Uh, the boss received this message, hey, this package couldn't be delivered. You need to come, um, you know, click on this link so you can pick it up. And the boss was just too busy to deal with it. So sent it to his assistant, and the assistant, being a diligent, hardworking person, immediately got right on it, clicked the link, installed the virus. Another one is the ADP payroll. There's a lot of these floating around. And if you think about this one's really insidious because you, somebody in your organization might get an email that says payroll report. And they're thinking, oh, I've got this report. Nobody knows I have it. I think I'm going to just, I'm just curious. I, I want to see how much everybody makes. So they open that up and they install a crypto locker virus on your network that attacks your network. There's voicemails from unknown callers, fake e-fax messages. Dun and Bradstreet, you might get one that says, oh, there's some sort of negative activity uh, against your company. You want to check that out. The fake Verizon wireless bill um, had a user come to us. They have teenagers. They got this an email with a giant bill from Verizon wireless. It was just a fake, but because they saw this and they know it, it could be possible and a lot of people have Verizon wireless, he, he clicked on the link and got a virus. And the new one that's really dangerous is the wire transfer requests, which we'll review. On the fake package, things to look for is y you see a lot of official looking stuff. Delivery failed, it has a long package number, it says do not reply to US Postal Service. But if you click on, if you hover over the links, don't click on the link, hover, hover over them, you'll see the links go totally elsewhere. It's not going to the US Postal Service, it's going to some other crazy place. And it's got a .zip. This one's actually installing a virus right on your system. Slow down and be, slow down when you're opening your email and make sure every user in your organization knows this. A lot of times the business owners or the principals in the business are very tech savvy, but this whole system relies on that everybody in your organization is up to date on what these threats are. So the threats just change and evolve and they're getting more sophisticated. So this is a, a screenshot of a crypto locker virus. This is the warning that you'll get. If Once you're infected with this virus, this will pop up on your screen and says your personal files are encrypted. Um, this is just a, um, a, a sample that I got from Dell SecureWorks, but it's going to have a timer and it's going to say you have to pay the ransom before this time. Now, if you have a rock solid backup, you recover, you clean up the virus and you recover your data from backup and you're okay. The problem is if you don't have a rock solid backup, then you're going to have an issue. And if you just store files in multiple locations, keep in mind that these kind of viruses will go through network shares. So you do need to isolate. Your backup should be isolated. Crypto lockers, uh, there's crypto locker, crypto wa wall, there's a locky virus, there's a whole bunch of different uh, variations of this. They actually caught the original crypto locker person, but everybody found out like, wow, this is a way to make a lot of money. So the bad actors just came in and did variations. So it's a class of virus known as ransomware. Your data will be held for ransom. Now, keep in mind, they don't actually have access to your data. Nobody can read your stuff. It's just that they've uh, vandalized it and uh, they want you to pay them to get it back. Um, these either, a lot of these come by email attachments. Um, they're also drive-by viruses on websites. You might go to a legitimate website there's an ad on that site that's coming from a totally different server, and that one could get infected. That's a very common way of getting it. Uh, system communicates with the remote server, and all your files get encrypted, and then you get the ransom request. So if you just get a general virus, sometimes your computer might be slow. Um, if somebody calls us up and says, my computer is slow, we're going to check you know, how much RAM do you have, and we're going to do virus scans. That's standard operating procedure. You might see website redirects. 
It used to be it was more obvious. Now a lot of times you can get a virus and there are absolutely no symptoms. They're known as dropper viruses. This is a big reason, by the way, why last fall we increased our security defenses. Anybody on managed service with us is now running open DNS as well on the network. Here's an example of a phishing email. This is an email that's sent out um, that says, oh, your mailbox is almost full. And this looks a lot like the real uh, message that you might get from Exchange, except I got this in my inbox, and I'm the mail administrator, so I know it didn't come from us. But this is one that will get a very busy person. If your mail's ever filled up, you know what happens. Your mailbox is full, no new mail can come in, so everybody who sends you email gets a bounce message, which is really disruptive. So this is the kind of thing, it's socially engineered, it's like, oh, I better get on this right away because I'm traveling, I can't, I can't have this problem. Once you click on activate, sometimes they ask you to log in so they get your credentials, sometimes it's just you're clicking on a link to get a virus, but uh, don't go there, slow down, and get familiar with the real messages from your system. And that goes for, we had a question before the webinar, that goes for uh, antivirus warnings, the pop-ups, be familiar with what product you use so that you know when the pop-ups come up what they are. Um, here's another example of a spoofed message. This is an ACH notification that's supposedly coming from ADP. It's a total fake. And a couple of things to look for. So, and some of them are obvious and some of them are not obvious. But this, in this case, the dates don't match on the sent and the summary information. It says you can download your payroll report from Dropbox. A ADP would absolutely never use a consumer product like Dropbox to store files. It's not secure. It's a convenience tool. It's fabulous, but it's not a secure place to store stuff. And then it links to Cubby, which is the Mosey competitor. There's a lot of different variations of Dropbox, the consumer kind of file sharing things. But it actually clicks to a competitor. Uh, there's no signature at the bottom. If you see messages, call your vendor. Um, if, if you get something from a credit card company, call the number on the back of your card. Don't click on anything in an email. Don't, uh, don't even call. They can even set up fake numbers. They get more and more sophisticated. Here's an example of a TD Bank notification. So it said um, there's a problem with the account they want you to click in. And uh, uh, it, one says remove account limitations. One is a slightly different thing. Something's wrong. you got to fix it. They both want you to click in. Now, one of these I just got a week ago in my inbox. Uh, the... I don't, I don't have an account with TD Bank, so I knew right away that this is not a real thing. But you figure, you know, they sent them out from Bank of America. People have multiple accounts. You might have a business account, a personal account. You might have a credit card with a different bank. So if they send out millions of these, there's a lot of people who bank at TD Bank who, who are going to click on this and just think, okay, got to take care of this right away. And whammo, you're hit. If you hover over the links and not click on them, but hover, you can see they come from someplace else. You can also look at what's known as the header of the email and this will tell you where the email is actually from. Again, to see where the spoof message is from. A lot of times if people want us to check an email, we'll ask you to send the email as an attached item and not just forward it because that's the way we can see the full header and you see the entire path of where the email came from. So this came from someplace totally different. It's not from the bank. Uh, you might wonder, well, gee, with a spam filter, why aren't these getting blocked? Well, once the volume of the mail is detected, they will all be blocked. But initially, they're not blocked because a, a trickle can get through. And there's nothing really um, damaging in the text of that email. It says, it just says there's a problem with your account, etc. And lots of real emails will say, click here. So, but once they determine, once it's seen that, okay, wow, there's a lot of traffic coming from this server somewhere, then it's going to get shut down. But a few can trickle through, and that's what the bad actors rely on. Wire transfer scams. Um, this is a kind of scam known as a confidence trick. They will actually, um, through social media, harvesting information, they get something from a boss, from an a boss to an employee. Hey, um, can you do this wire transfer for me? They're typically... Um, the typical trick is they're written uh, to be very short and urgent, and that's to get people to, to log in. Um, the other thing is to watch for similar looking domain names. Uh, in, in the case where the stakes are higher, somebody could actually take out a domain name that's very close to yours. If you're a $10 million business and bigger, you're going to be exposed to more sophisticated threats. So example.com versus example with two A's. That's the kind of thing to look for.
All right, another wire transfer request is from boss to employee. Um, hey, need this wire transfer today. Are you available to assist me? Sent for my iPhone. Okay, um, the, uh, you need to authenticate with as a phone call. A lot of banks are now warning people to do this. This is why, because you, the the diligent employee is going to reply back right away. Yeah, sure, anything you need me for. Not knowing it was a spoofed message, they're replying back to somebody else. But they're they're working quickly. They're not even noticing this. And the other thing is all the stuff's on social media. Like it might be, um, people could harvest stuff like they know somebody's on vacation. They can find who the finance person is. They can find this information from your website. So. Keep in mind, and the bigger your company is, the more at risk you are, but they're going after small businesses, and they'll go after $10,000, uh, and this stuff all adds up. So all of the employees in your company need to be aware of this. This, this is one, and, and the threats are real. I was at a business event recently, let, saw a local bank manager who told me that he personally knew of two people locally who lost jobs over these wire transfer tricks. So they're real. They're getting people... Uh, maybe the stakes aren't going to be real high. This is from a company, Ubiquity Networks, that, that makes act really fabulous wireless networking equipment. And, and in their annual report, they disclosed that they were hit for $40 million. And once you, if you initiate the transfer, it, it's, it's your problem. The bank, um, basically the bank has done exactly what you've requested it to do. You've put in a wire transfer. Um, it's... Uh, it's done what you've asked it to do. So you have no recourse with the bank. You can't go to the bank and say, oh, well, somebody tricked me. doesn't matter. If you initiate the transfer, you've basically given away your money, and that's it. Uh, so to, to summarize, security is really about layers of security. Uh, there is no such thing as 100% protection. You can have a spam filter. And you can have everything in place. There's no such thing as 100% security. You need just one employee in your business making a mistake on one of these things, and, and they've gotten through. And with any kind of security, you need to protect yourself against everything, but all the bad actors need is one threat coming through, and they're successful. So I have the spam filter in place. Never trust um, unsolicited mail. Watch for any financial transaction request. And even if it's from a boss, a named boss, to a named employee, you you have to watch out for these. Treat email attachments with caution. Um, keep antivirus up to date. Security patches up to date. By the way, security patches up to date, are, that's required by law, by the Mass Data Security Law, as well as HIPAA and under, other industry regulations. A lot of pe people ask me, given the monthly reports, if you're on managed service, like you have to do this by law. Um, up to date firewall security, your perimeter security, your comprehensive gateway security. That's an annual renewal we do with you, and it is really important. Will one thing completely 100% protect you? Absolutely not, but you need to have all these things in place. And then employee education and training is really key. It's specifically required by the Mass Data Security Law and HIPAA, and you can see why it's extremely important. And then the last thing to note is that your, your backup needs to be rock solid and up to date. Uh, if you're doing file and folder, you gotta make sure you're protecting everything. And you know, next time one of our engineers is on site, let's spend some time going over it with you so you're secure. Another thing to watch out for, is sometimes people do some of the work themselves. If you've installed stuff, you may not be putting stuff where it's supposed to be for your backup. We highly recommend, um, if the budget permits, that you go to a full backup and disaster recovery where everything is protected. And thank you for joining us. For more information, check out our blog. If you have questions, we love to get those questions because we turn them into blog articles because other people have the same questions. Uh, we're on Twitter, Ikaru IT. We're on Facebook. So wherever you go to get information, and we record these sessions on YouTube. Also, call us anytime. A lot of times people will call us, hey, this is on my screen. We can look at your screen with you and determine, hey, that's your normal web route uh, message, or no, that's do not click on that. Disconnect your computer from the network. Um, it's worth a phone call if you have a question. All right, and with that, we're going to sign off. We're at 20 of you.